Future Business Conversation. My name is Michael A.C. Maynard. Thank you for joining me for another week where we're here to talk about business. Um, so to all my new viewers and those who have just flicked across the channel, just to let you know this shop, this show sorry, is for Christians who are in business or those who want to get into business. So if that's you, you're in the right place and welcome. For my regular viewers, you know what to do. We're going to go through business where we're going to go through um, things that God has shared with me and it's very, very practical. So. As you know, I'm not here to preach as such, but I'm here to share what God has given me and obviously fuse it with business um, principles and practicalities. So uh, welcome and, and let's just get into this um, afternoon show. Excuse me. So as I said last week, and for those who missed last week's show, I'm going to do a slight recap on last week because last week was all about... Um, we are the head and not the tail. And I used the very popular scriptures we know from Deuteronomy 28 verse 13 that says that. And so today is a continuation of that. And I covered some of the points last week. And as always, time is always against. So uh, we run out of time. But I'm going to pick up on some of those. And I'll also cover the, the others that I, I also covered last week. So you'll get all of them today in today's show. So hopefully um, it will be a blessing to you. And be open to what God will say to you in this show. You know, I'm believing that every time that I speak on this show or give practical advice, that God will speak to your heart about business. You know, he'll stir something in your heart and get you going. You know, so that's what I'm believing for. So have your pens, have your paper, and get ready to write something so you can retain what God is speaking to you today. So before we, we uh, move on, um, as always, I'd like to introduce you um, to the book that I've recently written. Um, those of my regular viewers know about it by now, but it's called How to Build a Christian Business. And this show, I'm going to share a couple of um, uh, words from it, if you like, so you can get a snippet of what it's about. But I'll do that at the end of the show. And for those, and thank you for watching, I'm going to give a free copy of my first kind of booklet, if you like. And as a short introduction to this book, it really speaks about, it's called My Reason Why. And what it talks about is discovering your purpose, knowing who you are and what God had placed you on this earth to do. So if you're not quite sure, if you don't fully understand why it is you're here, this book helps you to do that. It's revelatory, so you, it, you know, God will reveal things to you as you read it and it's not long because um, it's not designed to be it's designed just to prompt you and to awaken you and get you in the position where God would have you to be so just email me this that's all you have to do email me on the address um, my email address on the screen and I will send you this book free of charge no cost I want to put this in your hands so please email me so as I said, the word discovering or talking about being the head and not the tail and what that means. And what I shared a little bit about last week, and this is, as I said, part two, is the mindset of a market leader. And when I look at the scripture about being the head and not the tail, I gave a brief description of what it means to be the head. And the head is the person in charge or the chief or the leader. You know, these are just probably terms that we would probably better associate it with. And so... When God is saying he wants us to be the head and not the tail, and if we then relate that to us in businesses, what is he saying? He's saying that he wants us to be in charge. He wants us to be at the forefront. He wants us to lead. Now, some of us will be looking at our companies or those who are in business and think, well, well actually, my company is fairly small. And my turnover is, you know, it's, it's marginal. Maybe it's 50,000 or 100,000 a year. And, and, and to many, that's a very, very small business. However, God still expects you to lead. He still expects you to be a market leader. And I want to give you a kind of different definition to that because when we think of market leaders in the industry, we think of the biggest companies, the, those who are dominant and, and um, those who are well known throughout the world. And that is true. They are market leaders. They do have the best sales, but we too can still be market leaders even whilst we are growing our company. In other words, whilst we're in that small beginning state, we can still lead and we can still dominate. And that's what God is saying about being a market leader. He's expecting us to dominate in the area in which we are. He's expecting us to lead in the area in which we are. So if you're based in London or if you're based in Milton Keynes, he's expecting you in your geographical area to lead where you are. If you're in a specialist um, 
field. He's expecting you to lead within that field. And that doesn't necessarily mean, um, you know, overnight you have to be bigger than your nearest competitor, but it means you must have the power to influence them. And as I covered last week, influence is the key to being a market leader. Your ability to influence those who are bigger or smaller than you. And so I'm going to go into a couple of the points that I raised, and I'm trying not to go over the whole of last week's show, but I, because I missed some of it, I want to give you a, a, a clear, in fact, I want to run through it all so you've got it point by point. So, as I said, a couple of things that uh, is prudent for you to become a, a market leader is you must be willing to be seen and heard. I covered it last week, so I'm not going to reiterate it too much. But in other words, you can no longer stand in the shadows. You've got to be willing to put yourself out there. In this world of social media, people are going to look for you straight away. They're going to want to know who they're in business with. So it's important for you to put yourself out there. You know, make it known that you are um, who you are and the company that you represent and the values that you have. You know, on your profile, or whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or whichever, just make sure, make it known. Take every opportunity to sell your business when, on those platforms. Your practices, the second one, must be transparent. Again, I won't reiterate too much, but in everything you do, it must be clear that people can see your practice, especially as kingdom businesses, because we want them to follow us. We want them to look at what we're doing and follow us. You know the scripture that talks about that we are to be like Christ? Well, we want others to look at us and see us in that way. And the way we conduct business is a way that is pleasing to him, but also in a way that reflects our status in him or our position in his kingdom. And so we must be willing to be transparent. Uh, as I said, our businesses must be built in a way that it can be followed. So Christ was a, um, talks about he had disciples. We know that. To some extent, that's what we want. And we're going to, uh, for the sake of it, we're going to call our disciples our customers. We want people to follow us. We want people to follow what we're doing. We want people to um, engage with us. Because by doing so, they'll buy from us. You know, and it's the same. You go into Twitter and you have followers on Twitter. And whatever you put out, people follow you. They keep abreast of what you're doing. It's the same thing you want to build for your business. You want to put it in a light that it can be seen by all, and people can follow you and understand what you're doing. A leader sets the pace, so you dictate what the industry does. It's important that you understand your industry and you have the foresight to see what's coming up. Now, I'll give you a, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a spiritual snippet within that. One of the powerful uh, tools that's in the Bible, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, is the gift of prophecy. Now, we can always associate that gift in, um, in the church term, if you like. We can see it in church, and we know what the prophets are, and we believe words of prophecy. But in a business context, you can still operate that gift in the business context. Because if God has given you the gift of prophecy, in other words, the gift to foretell, you can foretell where the industry is going. That same gift will work in your business environment as it works in the church environment. And so if you believe that you have the gift of prophecy in you, you have the ability to foretell. In other words, through your products and through your uh, company and your practices, you can lead the way. You can come up with the new creative ideas that those around you that don't have that gift can't because of that gift of prophecy. And if you're in a business that requires innovation and that requires change, why don't you ask the Holy Spirit for that gift? Why don't you say to him, God, I need that gift of prophecy in my business. I'm not saying you stand up and say, thus said the Lord, and you know, in your business meetings or when your clients come in the room. But what I'm saying is, use that gift to allow you to see what's coming in the future. Use it to your advantage, because it's a spiritual gift that God has given us. You must be a game changer, which speaks for itself. And you must be willing to work twice as hard as those around you because you're a leader. So I want to go into the seven points. I started with three last week and I'm going to go into the seven points which I found from a great website. So get your pens and paper and write these down.
So I hope you, you've written those down and um, there was actually seven that I put on there. I figured I put an extra one on there, which I didn't mention, was around staying connected. And that's simply around your prayer life and ensuring that you're praying for your business continually and you're staying connected to the Holy Spirit. So I, I just wanted to, I'm going to go on to um, a, a website which I found, which is, um, does a, a market comparison of some of the, the, the market leaders in our um, it, well, across all industries actually, across the world and why they are market leaders. But I just want to home in on something which um, I believe God prompted in my spirit from, the, you know, two minutes ago. And it was around the spiritual gifts. You know, I believe that there are people, Christians, we all have spiritual gifts. I understand that. And God has given us spiritual gifts. But we're not using them in our business capacity. And this is one of those things where, you know, you get one of those words that, um, you know, I clearly speak to myself on this. But we're not using the gifts that God has given us to our advantage in our business capacity. You know, we have kept it to date as separate. So, in other words, we've, we've done what we've done in church and we've done what we've done around spiritual people, but in the world or whichever, or, or in our business, we're then using our mind and we're using our, our knowledge. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but we've got to remember that we are spiritual people and that we have, God has given us the access to spiritual gifts. And those gifts are us to use. So I love challenging you on this show and I challenge myself. Understand first and foremost what your gift is and your giftings are. Understand what they are. You know, the Bible, uh, the scripture talks about the spiritual gifts um, and, you know, word of wisdom, uh, word of knowledge, his gift of miracles. You know, you can find them all in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, um, I believe it's uh, chapter either 12 or chapter 13. But it, it lists the gifts that the Holy Spirit um, gives to each one. You know, the Bible says the Spirit gives utterance. Find out what your spiritual gifts are and then ask the Lord how you can use them in your business. How can you use them from a day-to-day -day basis in your business? Because we are one person and the purpose of God in us is used whether in church or whether out of church, in business or whether out of business. So your gift has to be used on a daily, daily basis. We cannot no longer leave it. So find out what your gifting is. And if you know what it is or if you, you know, God will reveal it to you, ask the Holy Spirit to show you how you can use this in your business. Because as people with the gift of prophecy, as I said before, we should be foretelling. We should be speaking of what, where the industry is going to go. We should be able to see if there's going to be a dip in the market. And we should be able to either inform people or make a change to our own business. We should have a word of wisdom. We should, you, you know, I'll give you a classic example. Imagine you're in a business deal or your, your largest customers are, have a problem and they come to you to fix that problem. You have the ability, the Bible talks to have the word of wisdom to, to seek the Lord and understand what the problem is and to come up with a solution that nobody else can. The Bible talks about that in, in, Joseph, uh, sorry, in Genesis where Joseph, because of his gifting, well, had the ability to interpret the dream and his dream propelled him in business because of the dreams that he had and the interpretation he was then able to tell Pharaoh and it propelled him to a position where he was a governor of um, Egypt and so his gift as the Bible says makes room for him and it will make room for us our gifting will make room for us so understand your spiritual gift today Find out what it is, research, ask God, pray, seek. And then when you understand your gift, try implementing it and asking the Holy Spirit to show you how to put it into your business day by day. We, the thing about us, and I will move on, but you know, when God gives you a rainbow, you've got to put it out there. It's, it's, um, we are destined to succeed. God has already commissioned that. He's already, he's already said it. From time that he told you to get into business, from time he told me to get into business, he had ordained us to succeed. It was written, it was a done deal. And that's whether we, um, whether we have setbacks or not. Succeeding is ours. It's, it's our right because of who we are in his kingdom. And so he has given us gifts to help us succeed. And, one, and some of these gifts are spiritual and we need to use those, we need to understand them, we need to believe in them, and we need to exercise them. And they will propel us because the word cannot lie. So I hope you got that. I hope that's if the one thing that you get from this show today 
is that you go away and discover what your spiritual gift is and then ask God how to use it in your business because it will succeed. Amen? Bless the Lord. So, um, moving on from, from that, and how do you move on from that when God gives you such a rich word? But I want to I wanna pull in um, some of the, the things I talked about last week, and I'm going to get through all seven. In fact, I'm going to read them all out, then I'm going to go back and reiterate them in case we run out of time, just so that you've got all seven. Now, as I said, they're from a great website called thenewmarketleaders.com. Uh, please go on there, have a look. And this website identifies um, why some of the largest companies are where they are. Why are they market leaders? What do they do differently? And so I began to read this out last week, but let me read them. There's seven. First is they are iconic. Second, they are collaborative. Third, they are designed. Fourth, they are responsible. Fifth, they are networked. Six, they are human. And seven, they are agile. Okay? So let's just take those one by one. First of all, they're iconic. In other words, they stand out from the crowd. So this is what I was saying to you in my first point. You've got to be willing to be seen and heard. So you've got to be willing to do things differently than your competitors. Take a chance. You know, this is where you can use your faith. You know, I'm not saying it's a, you know, it's every idea is a good idea, but sometimes until we do things, we won't know if they're going to succeed or not, or if they're going to bring the return that we want. So we've got to be iconic, and we've got to um, stand out from the crowd. Second, we've got to be collaborative. So we need to work with our customers to understand um, how best to serve them. I always say, if you're a Christian business, you are in business to serve. That's your principal thing. Before you make money, you're in business to serve. If you serve your customers right, they will pay you. If they are being served and they are happy, they will pay you. So serve first. Have a servant mindset, a servant attitude, and serve your customers. Be collaborative when you're actually developing your service or your product designed. In other words, they bring together their function and their form. You know, so how you uh, make sure your, 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 um, your product is a function, a well-functioned product, and it looks exactly how it's supposed to look. You know, you've got to make sure that the design of it is appealing. Just because we're Christians, we can't just put up rubbish products and think that God's going to bless it. It doesn't work that way. It should be the best. So make sure your design is good. Four, responsible. So, uh, the easiest example for this talks about um, environmental, for example. We've got to be responsible for the type of, if we're making products, the materials that we're using, um, the waste that may, we may generate, um, you know, even down to paper that we print, for example. There's, there's, a, there's a social responsibility that our products are going to impact young people, for example, and they're going to lead the way. As I said, you've got to build your business in a way that it can be followed. So you must be responsible in what you're doing. Otherwise, you will not succeed. Networked. Everything must be done in partnership. Look for either partners for your company or other companies who will complement your service or your product and develop a partnership. It's kind of like I scratch my, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. It's that type of thing. And we grow together. Pray and ask God to send you the right type of people to network with or companies to network with. Schumann, um, basically it says people do business with people. So when you're developing your service, remember, you know, it's a human person that you're speaking to. This comes back to the service. You're doing it in a manner to serve your customers. So remember, it's people that we're dealing with. And the final one is agile. And that talks about having the ability to change when you need to. Not to be flat-footed. If something's not working, change it. If something's not working, do something differently. So you've got to be agile and believe that, uh, and be willing to make the change. Now, one of the things that um, these, uh, you know, which I think would add to what I've just spoken about, so there are the seven things which is why companies are successful. I want you to um, 
I, and it's not so much a challenge as such, but I want you to really think about looking in your current area, in your current field, and find a company who is successful or is a market leader. And I want you to then look at them and against these seven points, see if you can see these seven points in that company. So look within your industry, find a market leader, find somebody who is perceived to be dominating, maybe well established, um, you know, has a strong market presence. And look at these seven things. And when you get these seven, see if you can find these seven things in, your, in their um, company. Because ultimately what you're doing is you're creating a benchmark and you're going to aspire to become these seven things and to obviously succeed your competitor. So evaluate them. Take notes. Why are they good at what they're doing? And then look at how you can develop your own plans. Put action plans in place. If it takes a year, two years, three years, but put it in place that you can then overtake them as a company. So the seven areas are going to come up on the screen now. Take notes of them and then we'll wrap up because time is swimming along. Talk to you in a second. Right, so I hope you've got those points down and I know it's a lot of information but we've got to get to the point where we are actively looking at ways to grow our business and those seven points will help you and obviously looking at your competitors to do that. Um, at the beginning of the show I said I was just going to give a quick snippet from the book and again I encourage you to, to buy it. It's on my website, please feel free to go on and click it. I've been doing a half price offer on the book that still exists so email me and you'll get it for half price. But the, the, you know, this book is full of good, good word, not just because I bought it, um, I wrote it, but it's, it's full of good word. But one of the things that I want to share from it is, um, I guess, an introduction to next week's show. And in chapter two, it talks about vision. And, and at the, the beginning of it, it says, our current surroundings cannot be allowed to obscure what we see. I'll say it again. It says, our current surroundings cannot be allowed to obscure what we see. In other words, we cannot look at what's around us and allow that to dictate where we're going. Now the message I'm going to bring next week, and I guarantee you really don't want to miss it, again it's about vision. But God spoke to me very clearly and he said, people have lost sight of the vision. And then I, I had to sit back and think, what does that mean? They've lost sight of the vision for their business. The, what you started out doing is not, sometimes we get lost in our way, we get things come in, our current surroundings get on top of us, and we stop doing that which we know we should be doing. Or, we, do, we don't allow our vision to be a parameter for us to operate. And what I mean by this is, and I'll share you very quickly, this is, this is what I'm going to speak on next week. Now, we all heard the, um, the verse that says, without uh, a vision the people perish. We understand that. And, people can probably associate that quite easily. And it's probably actually quite an easy verse to actually pull into business. So let's look at it in this context. Imagine if we then look at it in a literal sense. If you do not have a vision for your business, that scripture is saying your business will fail. As simple as that. It said if there is no vision for your business, your business will not succeed. And there's no other way I can put it. That's what it's saying. I'm not misquoting the Bible. I'm putting it into a business context. But I guarantee there are many people watching the show who have a business and do not have a vision for it. They cannot see an end point or a position, or a point in their business where it's um, uh, successful or where it has 100 employees or where it's turnover 5 million or whichever, depending on what your vision is. They don't have that and it's not written down. Now, according to the word, you are destined to fail. So I, I, I really want to, and as I said, I'm going to spend the whole of next week's show on looking at how to do a vision statement, how to be confined by our vision, and then how to use it on a day-to-day -day basis. But if you do not have a vision, apart from tuning in next week, you need to get one. And that's not a spiritual experience. It isn't something that you're going to get in a dream and wake up and say, God has given me a vision. 
It's something that you uh, put pen to paper. It's about your mental image. What can you see for your business? Only you can do that. And if you don't get one of those, no matter who works with you, they will have nothing to follow. Because in the other scripture that I'm going to talk about in Habakkuk 2, it tells us to write the vision and make it plain. So the Bible's given us all the instruction we need to. So join us next week to hear from that, and you'll get a great word on that. So just to break off, last scripture, Luke 19 verse 13, do business until he comes. See you next week. God bless.